afternoon, we are so privileged as the three speakers from different prestigious universities in Europe are with us to present their university's academic programs and achievements. Our speakers will be given five minutes each to share important information about their universities, and there will be question and answer portion. Let's start with our first speaker from the University of Padua, Italy, Mr. Alberto Paro. Go ahead, sir. Okay, I think our first speaker is not already inside the room. So let's proceed to the next speaker. From the university, from Tilburg University, Netherlands, Mr. Joshen. Yeah, thank you so much. Is it okay if I share my screen? Let's see, can everybody see my presentation? Yeah, okay, good. Hi everyone, and welcome to this session about the human society starts in the EU. My name is Suzine Jans and I'm external account manager for Tilburg University. Uh, Tilburg University is a research university located in the south of the Netherlands, as you can see on the map. And our university is located in the so-called Brainport region, which is Europe's top technology region. Companies such as ASML, the chip fabricant, and Philips are located in this region. And as you can see, we're very conveniently located when exploring the rest of the Netherlands or even the rest of Europe, as we're very close nearby major cities within the EU. Tilburg University was founded as a business school, uh, but our founders soon realized that in order to become a good business person, you also need to develop your soft skills, your intercultural communication skills, and your negotiation, uh, negotiation skills. And that is when our university expanded to a university focused on the social sciences in the broader sense. And we now have six schools on one modern green campus, as you can hopefully see on a slide. Uh, we're a middle-sized university. We have around 19,000 students of more than 110 different nationalities. So you will definitely not be the only international student when studying at our university or when pursuing a research career. Uh, we have 14 English taught bachelor's programs and more than 60 English taught master's tracks. So no matter what you're interested in, uh, our university will probably offer something that sounds interesting to you. Uh, furthermore, we have a lot of PhD opportunities in case you wanna go into an academic career and pursue a research project. At the moment, we have around six, six 700 PhD students at our university. Um, our motto is understanding society. And this means that we really look for students that are interested in global social issues and that really are not afraid to look critically towards society and that really want to improve and enhance society. And that is why we have a social responsibility component in all of our study programs and research projects. Uh, these are the six schools that we have on campus and all six schools offer English taught programs. And because today, of course, is about uh, the social sciences and the humanities and education, um, I will highlight those two. Um, Tilburg University is ranked extremely high in international rankings. We belong to the best 2% of the universities worldwide, according to Times Higher Education Ranking 2021. Uh, we're in the top 250. And as you can see on the slide, I put our rankings when it comes to the social sciences and humanities on the slide. Uh, Tilburg University uh, scores extremely high in business, economics, uh, philosophy, uh, psychology, and law as well. But because that's not the scope of this presentation, I left them out. A little bit more about the ways of teaching of Tilburg University. Um, all our programs have a multidisciplinary approach. So you will never address a topic just from one perspective. You always look at it from different perspectives. Uh, besides that, they're all English taught, so there's no need for you to learn any Dutch. I know some students might be afraid for that. Um, our programs are multicultural. We have at least 30% of our fellow students in class being international. So you will not only learn from your professors, but also from your fellow students, because it bring a different perspective and a different approach to class. Um, education in the Netherlands, so for all Dutch universities, is very interactive. So it's not that you just sit in class, take notes and listen to a professor. That's not how uh, education in the Netherlands is done. You're really challenged to think critically, to voice your opinion, to raise questions in case you don't understand the professor or if, or if you don't agree. 
Besides that, we do a lot in group assignments. So group projects, projects with case studies from different companies and organizations in the region or within the EU. And we focus a lot on skills development as well. So how to write an evidence-based academic paper, how to present a convincing argument, um, how to study large materials of books, for example. Um, what makes Stilberg, I think, unique is that we really bring the, the outside world in the classroom. So not only on global issues that are discussed in all programs, but also the close connection that we have with international and local companies and organizations. And I think that links perfectly to the Tilburg educational profile, which is focused on knowledge, skills, and character. So we really have a strong character building component in our programs as well. Then a little bit more about our bachelor's, research, master's, and PhD opportunities. Well, as you can see, we're a university that focuses on the broader sense of the social sciences. Yeah, and as I said before, we have so many different programs that we don't have time to delve into them at the moment. In case you want to know anything specifically about the programs, please come to the Tilburg University booth. Then an example of a PhD research project. Uh, Tilburg University is a research university, meaning that you will not only study a lot of materials, but also we, yeah, we also prepare you to become a research a researcher yourself. This is an example of Justin Beaver. One of our PhD students uh, developed a VR game in which he educates people about endangered species. And through the VR game, you can experience what it's like to be an endangered species yourself. So you feel how you're being, for example, shot by a hunter or how you have to swim through water in order to get away from another predator. So in this sense, you really see how we link research to education. Then a bit, little bit more about after your graduation. And I think I speak for all the universities that are present here today. Um, in case you're planning to stay within Europe, there are a lot of different career opportunities for you at local companies and organizations, at multinational companies and organizations, municipalities, local or national governments. Um, there's a large job market, I would say, within the Netherlands, but also in the rest of the EU. Uh, once you decide to stay in the Netherlands after graduation, you can apply for a one-year search visa. This year gives you the opportunity to look for a job, and companies within that year do not have to apply for a work permit for you. So it's more beneficial for you to hire you after graduation. Um, on average, our international graduates manage to find a job within three months after graduation. Uh, so that's very good. And a lot of our alumni or uh, master students decide to write their thesis at a multinational company. Uh, we have a career service on campus that can assist you in finding entry level jobs, but they also organize a lot of career preparation uh, workshops, such as how to write the personal, uh, uh, perfect resume, how to prepare, prepare for a job interview. Uh, we all have that on campus as well. Um, that was it from my side. Uh, I don't speak Filipino that, that, uh, that good. So it's Maraming Salamat, I think. So thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, and, uh, thank you so much, Ms. Joshen Jansen from Philbrook University. So let's proceed to our next speaker from one of the universities in Finland, Mr. Von Weigl. Go ahead, sir. Uh, magandang hapon sa inyo dyan sa Pilipinas and uh, good morning to colleagues here in Europe. Uh, my name is Bon. I'm representing uh, particularly our master's program uh, at the University of Uvascula here in central Finland. Uvascula is uh, the capital of uh, the region here in central Finland, which is like uh, 30, uh, 300 kilometers away from the capital, Helsinki. Uh, I, I would like to show to you... Uh, our the website of our master's program um, so we call it DECO uh, we have already welcomed uh, more than uh, 200 uh, international students since uh, 2007 we already have nearly 200 graduates also representing from uh, uh, about uh, 50 countries and uh, we don't have a graduate yet from, from the Philippines, but, uh, but there is a faculty from the Philippines, which, uh, uh, you, you know, yours truly, I've been teaching in a program for eight years. And uh, for Filipinas here, please also know uh, that we've had very good applicants from the Philippines. In fact, in the past uh, two years, we, we offered our... Uh, are 100% scholarships to applicants from the Philippines. But unfortunately, some of them have not yet uh, pushed through. 
So hopefully in the very near future, some of you could join us. Um, so what is the, the, the DACO program? It's, it, it's a unique program whereby we combine uh, the social sciences, particularly development studies, and the educational sciences. So it's an interfaculty uh, program run by the Faculty of uh, Humanities and Social Sciences and the Faculty of Education and Psychology. It's truly international, as I already mentioned to you. We have already welcomed uh, more than 200 students uh, in, in the program. And it's also interdisciplinary. So we approach uh, issues about development, education, and international relations, uh, even global politics, uh, global education issues, uh, global development uh, issues from uh, different perspectives. So you can approach it from education, from political science, from sociology, uh, from uh, um, even philosophy, uh, social and public policy, anthropology, um, and then we also have uh, a lot of uh, alumni now uh, working um, in international organizations, different government agencies, NGOs, even in business and entrepreneurship. Uh, we also have uh, students who have pursued the uh, doctoral studies because our master's program would qualify you to be a doctoral candidate. With regard to the theme, so if you're uh, studying in our program, the theme for today is entitled The Future of Human Society Starts With You or Starts With EU. Uh, how would we address that kind of theme? Uh, first would be the historical perspective. So we understand the present in light of the past for the benefits of the future. Uh, the second the way to address that for us is we also do critical thinking. So we question and deeply reflect on uh, learning processes and knowledge production. And that would include inter interrogating tendencies such as Eurocentrism. So some of you may also be critical about the title, you know, future starts with you. You know, it could be, it sounds so Eurocentric. So our program would give you also the, the freedom and liberty to question and interrogate that. Uh, so as to generate more innovative and cosmopolitan ideas necessary to respond to multiple crises uh, that we are facing today, you know, pandemics, uh, climate change, wars and conflicts, social injustices, poverty and inequalities. And then the third way that we're going to approach this uh, this theme is also what we call reflexivity or the re reflexive approach. Whereas, uh, whereby we regard every student as active actors and participants in development process and social change. So uh, please uh, uh, try and, uh, and expand your opportunities and horizon, join us here in Finland. So maraming salamat. Okay, thank you so much. Sir Boyd, of course, we have a lot of questions in the chat box. So there are so many interested to the programs you have presented. So before we entertain the questions from our participants, let's proceed first to the last speaker for this afternoon from the University of Padua, Italy. We have Mr. Alberto Baro. Go ahead. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I'm afraid I don't speak Filipino as well, so I will just <laughs> speak in English. Okay, um, let me share you the presentations that we have for you today. Um, I would like, first of all, to thank you again for the invite, and I'm very pleased to represent um, to represent the University of Padova, both as one of its employees as well as as one of its graduates, because it started here uh, in this university, who was um, one of the oldest in Italy, also in Europe. Recent rankings placed it in uh, um, the positions, especially in Italy, but also in Europe and worldwide for teaching and quality. And we think this is also thanks to its very wide uh, multidisciplinary approach, um, because we have a, a huge academic offer. Um, what do we do? We try, of course, to um, not only inspire students, 
But students, first of all, are citizens, of course, being placed in Italy. They are also European citizens uh, who nowadays have to operate not only within national borders, but as we know, as, we, as we've seen in the past half a year, they have to operate in a, on a transnational and on a transcultural level. Um, and this is uh, also um, thanks to these, as I've said, wide academic program, um, which focuses on management of interactions in processes of decision making and, sh and decision shaping. Um, addressing, of course, one of those keywords that were just mentioned by my colleagues a few uh, minutes back, um, in keywords such as sustainability, climate change, digital transformations. So um, how do we do that? Um, of course, we have this wide offer, which spans from mobility studies, local development studies, who have been recently implemented following, you know, the wave, and in some ways try to anticipate the new waves and the new crises that might arise in the future. Uh, but today, for the sake of the uh, presentation, the future of the EU starts, uh, the future of human society starts with the EU. Um, we would like to present you our degree program in European and Global Studies, uh, which has been very recently implemented a few um, a few years back. Um, I belong to actually the first uh, intake. Um, and this master provides these, we think, innovative and critical way to um, assess and uh, also, of course, also to try to provide new perspectives on um, the uh, on today's world, on today's political and institutional settings. Um, and the students here in this program, they develop skills, competencies, methods, and new tools uh, to think outside the box, to think outside of it of the European, um, the, the Italian uh, box, and uh, and try to um, evolve it on a more, uh, as I said before, transnational level. Um, these, I would like to highlight this, um, this slide because even though, of course, it is a program mostly um, addressed for political scientists, for um, studying international relations and diplomacy, of course, other backgrounds are welcomed. Um, and I think this is one of the added value of the program because it is a mix and match of uh, both political scientists, but as well as uh, students who have uh, a background in political philosophy, in geography, psychology, sociology, because of course, uh, these all these topics are very well interconnected and we cannot think only on a political level without taking account these other aspects. Uh, and this is why the classes, the classes are very rich and composites with many international students. Um, of course, we, uh, for time's sakes, we don't have uh, much time to talk about the tracks for this program. But as you see, there is very strong on European, uh, there is a, a very strong focus, I'm sorry, on European policies, European Union, and how the EU interacts uh, both uh, within uh, its border, but also outside its border on a more international level. Um, and these, all these tracks are, um, interconnected together in some ways. So even if you specialize in one of these tracks, um, still the, the focus would be on the EU. And now, of course, the EU can be um, the actor for a more wide approach to tackle these new challenges. Um, this focus of European students' uh, stu studies can be uh, can be seen from the the courses that students can take: EU um, policy design implementation, European and global economy, gender, EU politics, mapping global challenges, but also security issues, transnational issues. Um, and um, graduates actually uh, will, are able to work uh, within these uh, European contexts, both, both in European institutions, um, as in they, of course, they, they, they start as interns, but they can really uh, develop skills to um, get on a higher governmental level, but as well as to more grassroots organizations. There are a few clear examples of the uh, and graduates, alumni actually working in startups as NGO founders uh, on critical policy analysis, 
analysts. Um, also, and I would like to make a link to what has been presented before, to uh, present and to try to assess what are the European policies and politics also uh, from a Eurocentric point of view, but also to, uh, you know, see this Eurocentric point of view from um, an, another perspective. Okay, um, so uh, a criticism, but criticism in the positive meaning that it has, um, especially as, as I said before on these very uh, new uh, keywords, not very new actually, as we have been talking about climate change since 20 years already, but it has reason to um, to a world level now more than ever, but also sustainability, digital transformations and so on and so forth. Um, we actually have a video, it's a very brief video for you. Uh, so let's check if the link works. <laughs> so I don't know. Okay. Have you started playing the video, sir? Uh, it didn't work? Yes, sir. I think I... Ah, uh, yes. This is a technological issue that we have. Let me try again with this. Uh, okay. Please apologize, of course. It's also always very hard with technology nowadays. Can you see it now? Yes, yes. Okay, here you are. Hopefully now it worked. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so very much. much. Thank Padua. you for having us. The University of Padua. So at this point, let's proceed to the question and answer portion. We have some questions in the chat box already posted. So let me start asking you the first question posted here. Anyone would answer? Was the pandemic a hindrance for the scholar not continuing despite the 100% scholarship you awarded? What would the scholarship scope work? Yeah, I, I already answered that in the in the chat. Uh, so according to the to the Filipina who deferred her studies, uh, well, she was very honest about it. The, the pandemic uh, has been a major constraint. Why uh, she has decided to uh, to postpone her admission uh, and and submitted for non attendance. Uh, but then another Filipina who I met, uh, she was able to come here. And uh, she said it was man manageable. Uh, about the scholarships, uh, annually we give 100% uh, 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 well, free tuition and then also 50% uh, 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 free tuition. So we get, uh, uh, we offer uh, uh, two candidates 100% uh, and then another two candidates. Uh, or, or four candidates, uh, 50%. Uh, as I already mentioned, um, in the past two years, uh, three Filipinas were able to secure and were granted the uh, 100% scholarship, considering that we receive around 120 applicants a year. So, so much, sir. Really good candidates. Thank you. So. We have other information that you want to share from other speakers. All right, so let's proceed to the next question from Maria Pino. So the question is, do you have master's program for sustainable development practitioners? Anyone would like to answer the question? Um. 
Well, our university or our program covers uh, sustainable development issues. I mean, that's why our program is called uh, Development Education and International Cooperation. Uh, and if you look at the framework of uh, universities all over Finland nowadays, and I think even all over Europe, we, uh, we now op op operate within the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. Um, wh what we do uh, in our program is for students to have an appreciation between uh, appreciation of the important link between theory and practice. So there is room for practitioners uh, for us, but uh, we would remind practitioners that it's also important for them to appreciate and understand the theoretical underpinnings and, uh, and consequences of their practice. That's why we are in the university, so we don't also forget the, the theoretical dimension. Yes. Okay. Ms. Joshua, do you want to say something? about the question? Yeah, we have two uh, master's programs in sustainable development as well. One as a track within economics and one within our sociology masters. However, I agree with the, the University of Finland that um, I think our master's programs are very academically focused. So for practitioners, it might not be the best fit because it's focusing mostly on research and linking that to society instead of practicing in the field or doing an internship. Okay, thank you so much. So, Sir Alberto, do you want yes. to Yes. Um, yes, we do actually have uh, a joint European um, joint master's degree, uh, Rasmus Mundus joint master's degree on sustainable territorial development. It's very focused on um, the on how to adapt local territories uh, due to uh, recent developments in uh, climate change. So it's very, I would say more uh, professionally focused. And of course, being international uh, allows students, you know, to move around the world and see different, a uh, few different territories, which is actually quite interesting. And of course, it's a European project, but it's managed by the university as a coordinator. Um, and it's been active actually for quite a few years. Okay, so thank you so much. So another question. If we have the chance to visit your country and university in the near future, what would we need to prepare or be aware of in the light of the current pandemic? Would like to start? Yeah, so I can start. Um, it depends a little bit on the nationality. In general, uh, people who are fully vaccinated, so can show the Corona passport, they're eligible to enter the Netherlands. Um, if you're not fully vaccinated, then at least when you're living in the Philippines at the moment, you're not allowed to enter the Netherlands at all. We have an entry ban. However, our Dutch government keeps changing the COVID regulations. So it might be that next week without vaccinations, you're welcome to enter the Netherlands again. It really differs per week. So keep an eye on the Dutch government website. Okay, thank you so much, Mami Jongshin. So how about you, Sir Bon? Uh, well, uh, it takes a lot of preparation, but uh, as I advise some Filipinos here, uh, uh, th there are networks here. You can ask uh, um, questions, especially to fellow uh, Filipino students. Um, as their experience. Uh, we also have student ambassadors and alumni. They're all over LinkedIn. Um, so they are uh, very much welcome to, uh, to receive uh, uh, questions uh, from you and they will uh, give you advice accordingly. Okay, so thank you so much. How about you, Sir Alberto? Yes, actually, um, I would say it follows, as we are both in European Union, I think it very much follows what Josian has just uh, talked about. I mean, the government is constantly changing laws and regulation, but most of our students can actually are able to enter Italy. And also the Italian government has been providing vaccination for international students. Um, so uh, three I minutes think... left. <laughs> 
Uh, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I was, was, what I was saying, yeah, students actually have the chance to get vaccinated. Here. They are able to, of course, there are regulations in place. Um, and also our university, but I guess also other colleagues from other university um, have done this, uh, that we put in place this online system because it's what you need to do nowadays. So even if you are not able to join Italy in this very moment, you can still attend classes remotely and then join us as soon as you can. Okay, so thank you so much. So this would be the last question. Okay, so this is a question from uh, the Dean of the College of Art and Sciences to Mr. Juan Hueco. Where can we get the details of requirements in applying for Master's in Development Studies? Uh, yeah, of course, in, in, in our website. Um, and applications in Finland is centralized. So you just have to... Uh, you submit your application there, and then you you you, you have to select the, the different universities. Um, so one application, and then you you can uh, you can choose uh, uh, different uh, uh, priority universities for you. Yeah. Okay, so thank you so much. Of course, we cannot uh, answer all the questions posted in the chat box, but of course, we would like to thank our uh, speaker from the Tilburg University. Okay, Ms. Joshen Jansen, and of course, from the University of Padua, Italy, Mr. Alberto Barro, and one of the universities in Finland, Mr. Bonwek. Thank you so much. Thank you to all our participants who are joining us this afternoon. God bless you all. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you as well for you.